In today's video, we're going to be talking about the tropics where we still have Hurricane Lee now approaching Atlantic Canada and New England. So we're going to see Maine get some direct impacts from this one. We're also going to be talking about Tropical Storm, Tropical Storm Margo as well that still is out there in the Atlantic. That's been a long-term storm as well. And then we have Tropical Depression as well out there that we're going to be talking about that is expected to eventually become a major hurricane. So... We have some big things in the tropical department to talk about as well as an area of disturbance that is going to be likely developing eventually. And then we're going to be talking about the upcoming pattern as a whole as always. So there's so much to dive into. But before we do, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below as we're going to be talking about some really, really cool seasonal videos coming out there very soon. We do have our snowfall forecast out and available within that community. And we're also going to be doing all of our monthly and seasonal updates in there as well coming up very, very soon as well as weather consulting. It's only five bucks and it is in the description and pinned comment down below. Let's dive straight into things. And as you can see, Hurricane Lee expected to remain a hurricane until about 8 p.m. tomorrow on Saturday, where it is going to be making impact there with some of the very far southeastern regions of Canada there along the east coast. It could be very, very close to Maine there. So the further north up that Maine coast, the more impacts you're going to see. But it should be very rough along the coast for most of New England. Starting in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, up into Cape Cod, for the rest of Massachusetts as well, New Hampshire, and then again the coast of Maine. We're watching very, very closely. There is tropical storm warnings up and out for all of these blue areas. And then those kind of pink areas... Underneath the blue there do have hurricane watches as well where hurricane conditions could be prevailing. As you can see, this is going to cross over a lot of the Atlantic Canada area and then kind of cross out somewhere in between Canada and Greenland and still be at about tropical storm status. So absolutely insane uh, just how long this storm is going to stay alive regardless of how far north it's going and regardless of all of that land it's going to be crossing over. This one's going to be really, really wild. Now, Tropical Storm Margo again, this one is going to remain at Tropical Storm status, kind of just twirling and whirling out there in the middle of the Atlantic, as you can see, uh, all the way through Tuesday and into potentially Wednesday as a post-tropical storm. So that one is going to lose its tropical status, but still be at that kind of storm uh, intensity. So that is what we're going to be watching for, as this storm has just been very, very long-lived. Now, the more intriguing one, I would say, out of all of these, outside of Hurricane Lee, of course, is going to be this tropical depression that is expected to reach tropical storm status this evening. It is already at 35 miles per hour, so it only needs to hit 39 to be at that tropical storm status, so likely going to reach that very soon. It's going to reach hurricane status by 8 p.m. on Sunday and then major hurricane status by 2 a.m. on Tuesday as it's going to be directly approaching Bermuda. And then who knows what's going to happen once it crosses over Bermuda. Potentially, it could be reaching towards the East Coast. So this is just, once again, another Lee-type situation where we need to watch it very closely and nothing can really be ruled out. So very, very interesting. As we take a look at our Atlantic as a whole here, we see Lee, Margo, and then Tropical Depression 15 there. And then we see this area of disturbance here, where we have a 0% chance of development over the next 48 hours and a 20% chance of development over the next seven days. Likely, just like we've seen with all of these, we are going to see this work its way up from this point. So we will be watching for that very, very closely as well. Let's just move on to the upcoming pattern. And as we reach towards later this afternoon, an evening where we're kind of already at here, uh, we can see that there is some storminess in general around for a lot of your plains, Midwest, and down through the Southern Rockies, where we are seeing some of our first snowfall of the season here for Colorado. So there is some interesting things happening there. And then there is a pocket of storminess over the Southeast as well. So Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama area. That is where we're watching for that, of course. By the time we're reaching Saturday afternoon, you can see this European model takes Lee straight towards the border of Canada and Maine there. So that would be what we are watching for in that type of a scenario. Uh, we do see some thunderstorms firing up for a lot of the plains here. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Arkansas here. Definitely taking a look at some massive, massive areas of thunderstorm development. 
Uh, the southeast tier, so Florida, Georgia, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, Kentucky, Virginia. We're seeing some thunderstorms firing up here for Saturday as well. As we reach later to that evening, things are going to get very, very interesting. Um, and especially as we reach Sunday, here you can see that a lot of the eastern states and then back through the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes is where we're seeing a majority of this thunderstorm activity. Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Ohio. We're seeing a lot of thunderstorms. For these different states, pretty widespread as you can see because, I mean, I just named off like 10 plus states. So certainly a little bit of a more widespread event and it's acting a lot more like a cold front. So you see it stretching like this. Probably some cooler air behind it. Also probably some straight line wind damage can't be ruled out. This is good by the time we're taking a look at like 3, 4, 5 a.m. And we see a lot of thunderstorms around for the northeast, down through the mid-Atlantic and even the southeast coast here. A lot of thunderstorms overnight Sunday into Monday. Now for the day on Monday, we do see a little bit of some nor'easter development perhaps along that frontal boundary. Not that abnormal. We are reaching into the fall time and that's going to become a little bit more of a common occurrence here. So we can see somewhat of a warm front up above, cold front underneath type situation. We do have very isolated showers and snow showers happening in here for the Rockies, both for the United States and the Canadian Rockies as well. So pretty far stretching there as well. By the time we reach Tuesday afternoon here on September 19th, what we see is some thunderstorms and showers prevailing here for the Rockies and then back down through the Southern Plains, but really a quieter day here on Tuesday the 19th. Wednesday the 20th is a lot of the same, a little bit more active as we can see this pocket here, clearly distinguished for the Northern Rockies and Northern Plains. And then we see the Southern Plains with some heavier thunderstorms underneath. And then look at Canada here for areas in British Columbia, and I think it's Alberta there, but I get some of those provinces wrong sometimes. But right in this pocket here, we're watching some heavier snowfall for the Canadian Rockies, which is always a time that, you know, this is a time of year where we see those changes happening. Very exciting. We see that the Northwest in general has some showers, thunderstorms, and even snowfall happening. And then up and down the plains, we have this thunderstorm area that could bring some severe weather for states like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, the Dakotas, and even up into Minnesota. But really when you take a look at the east as a whole, much, much quieter here. As we reach towards Friday here on the 22nd, we can see that for the, the plains up into the upper Midwest and some of the Ohio Valley, we have this pocket kind of spreading of thunderstorms. So we're seeing more and more of this type of activity. And then for Saturday the 23rd, uh, we see this 998 millibar low pressure center developing. And this just brings storminess as a whole for states like Idaho, Montana, the Dakotas, Wyoming, Nebraska, some very heavy activity for a lot of these areas. And then for Sunday the 24th, we see this low rising up. We see a jet stream pattern about like this. And we do see that this wants to bring a cold front, warm front type dynamic. So this could be what really causes some surging warm air for this time period. Much warmer weekend as opposed to this one. And we could see a lot of this cold recycling back in towards the east as a result of this frontal boundary setup. We're going to need to watch it very, very closely. As we take a look at the total precipitation, we can see that really the areas that we are going to be indicating could be seeing some above average activity. It's going to be the Rockies down through the plains and then back up through the upper Midwest. So an area like this, and then also for a little bit of New England here with Hurricane Lee hitting. Also, I'd say Florida could be included here in some above average activity. The reds as a whole are going to be your heavier amounts. If you're curious, the numbers are down below for the totals, but we're not going to go over that today uh, verbally, but you can look at that if you're curious. The temperature pattern, which I've been enjoying showing all of North America because it's easier for me to kind of just show the patterns we're in. But right now we have this very strong positive PNA. So you see it stretching all the way up into far north in Canada. And this causes all of the cold that would be up here to dive southward for the central and eastern states. And we've seen that displacement take place. And as we move on, we can see that that pattern is not going to last too long. The eastern seaboard stays cool through the week, but a lot of the central states warming up. And the reason being is this negative PNA sets up, uh, and that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And this causes a surge of warmth through the central United States. So we see a big shift here. And we're eventually going to see that reach the eastern seaboard. By the time we're reaching the weekend here, we're going to see something a lot more like this. And I think 
If we move on a couple frames, this is a lot more classic here, but we see colder temperatures all the way from Alaska down through portions of Mexico. So this is a very far stretching negative PNA pattern. And that warmth surges for far northward in Canada in both the central and eastern regions. So we're seeing the exact opposite there. And we really just see that prevail through the end of the model run. We do start to see this cold spreading a little bit towards the central states and we do see some warmth maybe. So I'm gonna put up arrows for some trending warmth along the western seaboard in a couple places. This could be a sign that we're gonna see the cold move back eastward, but only time will be able to tell. We are gonna track this pattern overall with you guys daily. Speaking of daily, we do upload every single day. So you can hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.